Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's On Shape Sheet Metal tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a challenge found here at TooTallToby.com in the Practice Models app. And so if we click here on Practice Models, we can see that we've got a repository of over 100 challenges for any 3D CAD user to try to complete using any 3D CAD system. And each one of these challenges asks the same thing. What is the mass of this part? Can you take a 2D drawing and turn it into a 3D model and calculate the mass? And so we've got a collection of about 20 challenges that are available for anyone for free, as long as you have a Too Tall Toby account. And then after that, if you really like the app, you can sign up for the premium membership and gain access to this entire library. And one of these challenges that's available for free is this challenge here, 24-01-07 and we can see here that this is a tier four complexity challenge and that it's a sheet metal challenge. Sheet metal is one of my favorite things to do in CAD. So I'm very excited to give this one a go. So I'm gonna say click here to practice and we can see here that so far, 394 people have completed this challenge and the skills tested are sheet metal. That sounds like I'm in the right place. So let's get into it here. We click down here at the bottom where it says click here to begin. And then we click this button here that says reveal drawing and boom, the clock begins. And we are now gonna be challenged to create this model. Now, when it comes to this model here, you can see that this is a sheet metal challenge and just kind of general strategy for me when I'm working in sheet metal is I always look for a scenario where I can pick two or more lines like maybe this line coming down here and then this line coming out like this and then I can kind of extrude those lines as a thin feature. I think that's a great way to get started in sheet metal. It kind of sets you up for a nice foundation for some of the subsequent features. Now you don't have to use that technique and I think that as you get more and more advanced you're going to learn some some better techniques some more efficient ways of modeling in sheet metal but especially for users who are just getting started I think this is a great approach. Look for two or more lines that you can extrude as a thin feature. So I think I'm going to start out with these two lines here. I'm going to extrude them over. Then I'm going to create this flange here that'll come over. It'll be kind of like rectangular. And then after I create that flange, I'll get in there and I'll create that angled cut coming down. I could create that angled cut and the radius and cut that, that section away. Then I can create this additional tab sticking out the bottom here and this additional tab sticking out the bottom here. Add a couple of fillets, add this hole here, add this big large hole here, mirror the whole thing, and then I should be good to go. Now, I know that took a few seconds to come up with that game plan or really over for a minute to come up with that game plan, but I think it's always a good idea to come up with a game plan. Now that we've got that game plan, let's jump into the software and give this thing a try. So I'm gonna move this over to my second screen. I'm gonna bring up my keyboard cam here and let's choose create. We'll create a new document here in the public space. I'm gonna call this 24-01-07 SM angle bracket. That way, if, if you're using Onshape, you can search the public space and you can find that document and take a look at it. And now, just like we said in the game plan, I'm going to start out here on the right plane, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm going to create a sketch of that line coming down. So this line coming down here from the top down to here has a distance of 105 and then a line coming over here like so, and that's going to go out to a distance of 30. So I think actually I misspoke in my game plan. We're not gonna need to create that extra tab because we're creating it here in this very first feature. So now that we've got those two lines, that's what your first sketch should look like. If you're following along with as a tutorial, that's what you want your first sketch to look like. And then you can exit that sketch and you can go in here to your sheet metal model button up here, sheet metal model. And once you choose that button, you can choose extrude. And then the geometry we're gonna extrude is gonna be this line and this line. And now we need to look back at the drawing. We can see in the drawing, it says that the default wall thickness is three millimeters. The default bend radius is five millimeters. So three, press tab here, five, okay. And then the depth of this extrusion, the depth in this direction, looks like it's gonna be 100 millimeters total. And we're only doing half, so 100 over two enter and there we go that creates our first feature in on shape in our sheet metal model now the one thing to be aware of i forgot to mention this is if we are looking at this thing from a side view here we want to be aware that we can have the sheet metal material go to the inside or to the outside of our original sketch in this case we want it to go to the inside of our original sketch so this is what your very first feature should look like in this challenge so now i'm going to hit the green check mark and now i'm going to create an edge flange coming off of this edge here. We talked about this in the game plan. Let's execute. 
If you guys like coming up with a game plan and then executing on the game plan, hit the like button on this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this tutorial. So I'm going to click on this edge right here, and then I'm going to choose this flyout menu and choose flange. And I'm going to choose to bring a flange over in this direction. So let's bend that to the opposite side. Let's take a look at what's going on here down at the bottom of this flange. Now, we made this original line go out to 100. The, the total uh, distance of this thing is 116, or really we made it go out to 50, and the total distance is uh, 58. So it looks like we can now choose a different option here for our flange alignment. Inner, outer, middle, and hold line. And look at that. When we use that option for hold line, that gives us exactly what we were hoping for. We're adding on that additional uh, eight millimeters for the bend radius and that additional five millimeters for the wall thickness here. So that should give us that perfect distance out to 116 over two or 58 millimeters. So that, that looks pretty good to me. The only thing I need to define now is what is the distance of this flange, meaning how far out are we bending this thing? And it looks like that's going to be 100 millimeters. So 100, enter. Let's do a quick check here on this thing. So I'm going to pick this face and I'm going to pick this face here. And then I'm going to look down here. It's kind of behind the clock. We see that that distance is 100. So that's good. All I did was pick on those two faces. Let's press the space bar to clear our selections. And then I'm going to do the same thing here from this face over to here. That should be 58. So I'm going to look down here in the lower corner and look at that parallel distance 58. So always good to kind of double check your work as you're going through and building these models. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this face here, begin a sketch, orient my view. And I'm using the S key to bring up this menu. Uh, if you're not familiar with the S key, take a look at the uh, other video that I created on using the S key and on shape. But you can see that I've kind of customized my S key a little bit there. And uh, and then after I, let me just show you that line again. After I create that line, come to the end of that line, single click, come back, just hold my mouse over that line endpoint. And then I can come off of it and I can create an arc, which is tangent to that line. And then once I click the endpoint on that arc, I can type in a radius of 30. Nice. Now we can create a vertical line here right up here to this top edge and then back over here to this point. And so now we can hit escape. We could pick this arc and this line and press T for tangent. We can pick this line and this line here I for coincident, and we can press the S key and bring up our dimension tool. We can create a dimension from this backmost edge to this point. That dimension is going to be 12. And then we can create a dimension that goes from this lower Let's see here. Uh, from this lower edge here to this line, and that dimension is going to be 37 degrees. So this is what your second sketch should look like. If you're following along with doing this as a tutorial, this is what you want your second sketch to look like. So once you've got that sketch created, you can choose Extrude. And because we're working in sheet metal, Onshape automatically makes this an Extrude Remove. And so this depth here is going to be either you can make it blind or you can make it up to next. If you want to just go up through, um, you know, that one face of the sheet metal up to next works there as well. We can hit the green check mark and boom, there is our cut extrude. And so now, now we're ready to create that flange that's kind of sticking out here in the front of the model. So once again, we pick an edge of the model. And once we pick that edge of the model, we can go here to the sheet metal flange command. So I choose flange there, and then we're going to bring a flange out here. Let's reverse the direction of that flange. Looks like maybe uh, we're running into a little bit of problems here again with the flange position. So it looks like I kind of lost some material here. So we want that flange position to just be right here, right along where that original edge existed. So let's change that flange position to hold line so the flange comes right off where it originally was uh oh run into a problem here let's reverse the direction okay it's in the right spot but if i reverse the direction back oh now i'm running into a problem well this is where we want to use the option for partial flange so partial flange and then what you can do is you can say that you want that partial flange to be uh, a distance from this corner or if you click this button here, you can say you want it to be a distance from this corner over here. So we want it to be a distance from, from this corner over here, and we want that distance to be, looks like the flange is 50 millimeters. So let's see if we make that 50, if that gets us close. The only question is, is it taking that distance from this this face back here or is it taking that distance from here where that orange line is showing so how can we determine that really quickly we can hit the green check mark we could pick this face here pick this face here 
And then look down here in our uh, our parallel. Actually, I picked the edge, not the face, but it's okay. It still worked. Pick that face, pick the edge. And then down here, you can see the parallel distance is 50. So that is excellent. That's exactly what we were hoping for. And then again, just to kind of confirm this, you can maybe pick this edge here and then look down here in the corner and you can see that it's telling us that that edge has a length of 50. So this, this kind of quick measurement, it's a really, really good shortcut to know about. Let me know down in the comments if that's something new that you didn't realize before and on shape that can really, really help you. Or even if you are using it, let me know that too down in the comments. So then the final thing I didn't put in here was what is the width of this flange in this direction? We didn't put that in when we were defining the flange. So I'll double click on the flange here. And then once I double click on the flange, I can say that I want that to be a distance of 35, 35. And then again, pick this face, pick this face or edge. We just learned a moment ago we could pick the edge. And 35. There we go. That quick double check. Really, really helpful in on shape. So now we can S key fillet. And the fillet is going to have a radius value here of 7. So 7 on this edge, on this edge, on this edge. All right. And now we can choose to create our hole. Here's a little trick that you can use when it comes to defining that hole location. Actually, you know what? That trick's not going to work. Sorry. Uh, live solve. We're doing a live solve here. So let's just begin a sketch here, and we'll go normal to, and we're going to create this hole here. So single click, move your mouse, single click again, let go of your mouse. This is going to have a diameter of 12, and then we are going to put in a distance dimension from here to here, and that distance is going to be 70 over 2. Or if you're going to be, you know, if you know you're going to be mirroring the part, the other way that you could do this is you could create a line here and press Q, drop in that line like so, and then you could do a dimension to that line. Now, normally you would use this for a, a revolved part. See how it's giving you a diameter? But in this case, we're just using it because we know we're gonna be mirroring this part. And then the final dimension that we'd put in here would be a dimension of 25 from this edge to that hole. Nice black, fully defined sketch. That's what we want. And so we will S key extrude and this is going to once again be a remove. And once again, we can go up to next for this. And there we go. And then one final cut extrude here. Pick this face, begin a sketch, S key circle. Drop this circle in here right on that center edge. That circle is going to have a diameter of 82. Whoops, 82. And then we're going to have a distance dimension here from this edge down to this point. And that distance is going to be 50. And so there we go, S key extrude, and this is going to be a remove once again. Once again, we can do up to next and whoops. Let's see here. It didn't like up to next because I'm not sure why. Let's just change it to up to face. There we go. Likes that. I'm good with that. I'm good with that workaround. And so then what we could do to finish this off is we could choose mirror and we can choose this face here and uh oh, sorry this body here and then for our mirror plane we could choose this face here and that gives us a mirror this is going to be an add so that it merges everything together add and we hit the green check mark and there we go if we look at our sheet metal tab here the flat view looks great so we can confirm that that looks pretty good it matches up with the drawing and so now let's go over here to our part one right mouse button if you wanted to you could choose edit appearance and you could choose to make this match the appearance from the customer and then you can right click and you can say assign material and this material is going to come from the custom two tall toby materials library and it is going to have a material uh, density of Whatever is on the title block, plain carbon steel, 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. And we hit the green check mark there. And then down here, kind of behind where the clock is, you've got this button for mass properties. So I'm going to choose that button and we're going to choose this body. And we're coming up with a mass here, 585 grams. So I'll come over here. I'll type in 585, enter. And oh, yeah. Whenever you see that purple box, that is a good sign. Let me move this over to my main screen here. Whenever you see that purple box, that's a good sign that you got it correct. So we can see here it says, congratulations, this answer is correct. The model answer was 585 grams. You did it in 12 minutes and 16 seconds. Not bad, not bad. And I'm going to say submit. And there we go. We were able to complete that challenge. And we can see here that now 395 people have completed this model. Very nice. And if we scroll down, we can see kind of how we how we landed relative to the field. So of those 395 people, it looks like 
1609 was the average time for that model. So 1216, my time, not bad, below the average. That feels pretty good. And we can see here that six minutes and 22 seconds is in the top five percentile. So if you can get down to that time, six minutes and 22 seconds, you are absolutely screaming on this challenge. But I hope that you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I hope that you learned a lot of good tips and tricks. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Let me know down in the comments what you learned about Onshape and about sheet metal and about speed modeling. And of course, if you think this is your cup of tea, be sure to visit us at twotalltoby.com. Sign up for our Practice Models account. We would love to see you in there doing these challenges. And I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. See you, everybody.